dear students in this slide we are going to study structural isomerism that means continuation of the isomerism in the last class we have studied stereo isomerism there are two parts optical isomerism as well as geometrical isomerism we have studied in the last class that there are four types of structural isomerism we will go one by one first one linkage isomerism here the word itself says link which we are link the linking between the central metal atom and the ligands two or more complexes or coordination compounds having the same molecular formula but differ in the linking atom of the ligand with the central metal atom difference is linking atom of the ligand and the central metal atom since this linking atom is different this type of isomerism exists only when there is an ambidentate ligand in the complex a simple example you can observe here the complex which contain thiocyanate and isothiocyanate thiocyanate scn isothiocyanate ncs both have the same molecular formula but differ in the linking atom here metal with the thiocyanate sulfur atom of the ambidentate ligand links with the central metal atom another nitrogen is of the ligand linking with the central metal atom that's why both the complexes having the same central metal atom and same ligands but differ in the linking atom such type of isomerism is called as linkage isomerism this is discovered by jorgensons and he says that when he compared the two compounds with the differ by the linking atom of the ligand cobalt pentamino nitrito chloride in the first compound nitrogen atom of nitrite is linking with the central metal atom cobalt gives the red color and the oxygen atom of nitrite o n o oxygen atom of the nitrite links with cobalt then the color of the complex changes to yellow and so is they when the linking atom of the ligand changes with the central metal atom then the property also changes and see considered that linking atom change then the complex is changed there are always isomers second category coordination isomerism in coordination isomerism complexes having the same molecular formula two or more complexes having the same molecular formula differ in the coordination of the central metal atom with the ligand that means exchange or interchange of the ligand with the central metal atom takes place example you can observe hex first hexamino cobalt hexacyano chromium cobalt is linked with the amine chromium is linked with the cyanide cobalt is linked with the amine and chromium is linked with the cyanide when its isomer exists the exchange of the ligands with the central metal atom takes place that means amine goes to chromium cyanide goes to cobalt that means exchange or interchange of the ligands with the central metal atom takes place give the coordination isomerism here chromium is linking with the amine and uh, cobalt linking with the cyanide that is why these two complexes are called as coordination or coordination isomers <coughs> and the phenomenon is coordination isomerism third type is ionization isomerism here as the word says ionization nothing but what when you add a compound to water or any solvent the complex undergo ionization in the beginning itself said whatever may be the written inside the square bracket does not undergo ionization then which undergo ionization only counter ion 
So that's why this type of isomerism can be observed when they differ in the counter ions. Or by definition, it can define two or more complexes or coordination compounds having the same molecular formula but differ in the ions when they are dissolving solvent or water. Example you can observe pentamino sulfate cobalt bromide, pentamino bromide cobalt sulfate. Here bromide is the counter ion, sulfate is the ligand. Another example bromide is the ligand and sulfate is the counter ion. When you add these two into water, the first complex dissociates to give complex plus bromide ion, complex plus bromide ion. When you dissociate the other one, which dissociates to give complex plus sulfate, nothing but two complex having the same molecular formula gives different ion. That's why these two complexes are said to be ionization isomers and the phenomenon is ionization isomerism. Last category, solvate isomerism. This type of isomerism is exist when one of the ligands or the counter ion must be solvent. If the solvent is water, the isomerism is called hydrate isomerism. If solvent is water, then the isomerism is called hydrate isomerism. This is similar to ionization isomerism, but there is different. Ionization isomerism need not be having any ligands as solvent ligands or any complex having no solvent ligands or counter ion can show what ionization isomerism but to be solvent isomerism there must be there must be at least one solvent molecule either ligand or counter ion that is the condition for solvent isomerism solvent isomers differ by whether or not a solvent molecule is directly bonded to metal or iron or merely present as free solvent molecules in the crystal lattice. Example you can see hexa aqua chromium trichloride, penta aqua chloride chromium chloride. There are two complexes. First complex is having water molecules as ligand, other complex you can observe one of the counter ion is replaced by what water molecule hence these two complex have the same molecular formula but differ in the water molecule as ligand with the central metal atom first example you have six water molecule as ligand with the central metal atom another you can observe five water molecule as the ligand but coordination number is same hence these two complex are called as i red isomers since water molecule as ligand and the phenomenon is called hydrate isomerism in general we can call it as solvate isomerism next once we know the complex there is a bonding between the central metal atom and the ligands what type of bond is present how that bond is exist etc can be studied in bonding in coordination compounds. Werner was the first to describe the bonding features in coordination compounds but remember his theory could not answer the basic questions like why only certain elements possess remarkable property of forming coordination compounds. We know there are plenty of elements but hardly few elements or certain elements can from the coordination compounds, but not all. Why? Second, why the bonds in the coordination compounds have directional properties? Why compounds have characteristic magnetic and optical property? Nothing but when you place a compound in magnetic field, which is attracted or repelled by the magnetic field. Certain complexes have capacity to rotate the plane of polarized light either towards clockwise or towards anti-clockwise. Certain compounds have no such capacity. Why? To explain all these things, 
the theories have implemented or put forward there are bonding the different theories are the valence bond theory crystal field theory ligand field theory molecular field theory or molecular orbital theory etc we will study one by one first we will go for valence bond theory in valence bond theory the central metal atom it has to use its valence shell its valence shell for the formation of bond with the ligands there are two possibilities possibility is the central metal atom can use its inner d orbital and valence sn p orbital or valence shell only valence s orbital valence p orbital valence d orbital here the importance of using d orbital central metal can use either its inner shell d orbital n minus 1 d or valence shell d orbital but not both do remember this is the very important point a central metal atom can use either its inner d orbital or outer d orbital but not both suppose if a central metal atom if it uses its inner d orbital and valence sn p then it undergoes d sp hybridization maybe dsp2 or maybe d2sp3 like that if it uses its outer d orbital then ns np nd combines to give spd sp 2d sp 3d and uh, sp 3d2 like that and geometry clearly depends on what what type of hybridization is these hybrid orbitals overlaps with overlap with the ligand orbitals that can donate electron pairs for bonding the hybrid orbital we already studied that the valence shell orbitals they have different energy to get the same energy there must be hybridization once the hybridization they will get energy equal energy now they overlap with the orbitals of the ligands which can donate the pair of electrons that resulting in the different hybridization once we know the hybridization that gives the definite geometry of the complex if suppose the complex undergoes sp3 hybridization the resulting geometry is tetrahedral if it undergoes dsp2 hybridization then the resulting is square planar geometry sp3d gives trigonal bipyramidal sp3d2 and d2 sp3 results in octahedral complex just remember this the hybridization with the corresponding geometries let us study the different complexes here students you have to study four complexes here out of four complex one is must be in the examination so that's why be concentrated and study well the four complexes very very important first you go for diamagnetic property of hexamino cobalt 3 you know the atomic number of the cobalt is 27 therefore its ground state electronic configuration is given by 3d7 4s2 in the complex cobalt undergoes plus 3 oxidation state because cobalt you can take it as x and ammonia is a neutral ligand therefore x plus 0 is equal to plus 3 therefore x is equal to 3 hence the oxidation state is 3 hence the excited state of the cobalt is given by 3d6 excited state is given by 3d6 or s0 there are six ligands since six ligands are approaching and since six ligands they donate one pair of electrons each there are six orbitals required for what cobalt for the hybridization hence it undergoes d2 sp3 hybridization d2 sp3 hybridization and since it undergoes d2 sp3 hybridization already said the geometry is octahedral 
of the hydrogen. And all the six orbitals have no unpaired electron, therefore it is diamagnetic. If there are unpaired electron, then it is paramagnetic. If there are no unpaired electron, then it's always diamagnetic. In this complex, the cobalt have no unpaired electron, therefore it is diamagnetic. And inner d orbitals are used, hence it is called as inner orbital complex or low spin complex. So it is called inner orbital complex or low spin complex. It can explain with the diagrammatical. You can observe here. Already said, ground state of the cobalt is given by 3d7, 4s2. Since it is cobalt, 3 plus 3 electrons have to lose. Once 3 electrons lost, the configuration becomes 3d6, 3d7, 4s2. From that, you remove 3 electrons, 2 electrons from s, 1 is from d, therefore it gives 3d6. Hence, the configuration is given by 3D6. Singly filled first and then gets failed. Now, the approaching ligand is what? Ammonia. Since ammonia has capacity to pair up the electrons, ammonia has capacity to pair up the unpaired electron. Pairing starts from last to orbital. Therefore, this electron gets paired here. And the last electron gets paired here. Hence, three paired orbitals are formed with the two empty orbitals at the last. Two empty orbital. Since there are six ligands are approaching, six orbitals are required. Six orbital. Since these two are empty, therefore these two empty orbitals are used. One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember these two are empty because of the unpaired electron gets paired here. Unpaired electron gets a pair, therefore, last two orbitals gets what? Empty. Hence, these two empty, one is yes, 3D. Total six orbitals are used to undergo D2SP3 hybridization. Six orbitals undergo D2SP3 hybridization. Now, these D2SP3, six D2SP3 hybrid orbitals overlap with. Six pairs of electrons donated by ammonia and undergoes hybrid or overlapping to form a bond. Hence, this is called D2 sp3 hybridization. And said inner orbital, since the D orbitals are used from inner shell 3D, hence it is called as inner orbital complex or low spin complex. Since in the complex, there are no unpaired electrons. There are no unpaired. Since there are no unpaired electron, it is diamagnetic in nature. It is diamagnetic in nature.